And a quick disclaimer before we get this video started, if you do not want to watch an animal being killed, if you don't want to watch an animal being skinned or butchered or anything like that, if that's not something you're into, please click off the video now. YouTube, of course, is not gonna allow me to monetize this because once again, it is graphic, it is bloody. You will see all of that here. So once again, if that's not something you're into, please click off the video now. You can pick back up with me and anything else going on my channel in a future video, but this is not the video for you. And the second disclaimer, once again, we are not professional butchers. So um, me personally, I've helped butcher 30 to 50 deer probably in my lifetime. Uh, we did a couple cows last year, so I kind of got, uh, got used to that. Neither me or anyone else helping me in this video, none of us have butchered hogs before. One person had helped out with it years and years ago, so um, our experience is pretty much lacking in all areas there. So, But thanks to YouTube, we did kind of get a quick lesson on what we should do and how to do it. And so once again, we're not professionals. If you want to do this yourself and do it the right way, we may or may not be the right person to watch. So, um, But this is just how we did it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Once again, if you don't want to watch an animal being killed or skinned, or butchered or anything like that, please click off the video now. Welcome back to Farm and Hammer, everyone. I hope everyone's new year is off to a good start. For me, 2021 has already brought a few major changes, one being my job situation and a few other things. So that's one reason why I've been gone for the last week or two. But anyway, as you guys can probably see from the title of the video, um, we did end up butchering the pigs. If you're new to the channel and don't know much about me and this whole farm thing I got going on, this operation is mostly just beef cattle, bottle calves, that's what I started with, and uh, for the most part, uh, the rest of our farm is just beef cattle. So in March 2020, I decided to try out some pigs. We just got four. They were Idaho pasture pigs. Um, you can go check out those videos if you want If you want some more information about them, but um, started off with four little piglets, and the goal was to have them butchered by December 2020. And since the breed is a little bit slower growing, we ended up holding off until January of this year. January 2021. So for anyone new, hopefully that kind of brought you up to speed. And to butcher, of course you need some help, especially if you're doing four pigs in one day. And so I did recruit some help. I had two other people helping me and of course they didn't really want to be on the video. So that's why you will see blurred faces. And that's why this video took so long to come out because that was a lot of extra work to get those faces blurred. So it was like 30 degrees is a high that day and it was snowing It had snowed and rained the last three days before that. And so the weather was not ideal. And that's actually one reason why we ended up butchering the pigs when we did, because that day it had iced all night and the electric fence, of course, collected all the ice. It was weighed down so much that the pigs were out and just wandering around on the property. So um, because we knew the weather was still gonna be bad for the next foreseeable future, we decided this was the day they're going to be butchered. So the night before we walked the pigs all the way back to the barn. If you guys remember, when I brought the pigs home, this is the barn they went into. So. Um, they're back to where they started, made a full circle. And the next morning is when we were gonna take care of the rest. So we had four pigs in the barn. We decided to make a little pen outside the barn so we could let one pig out at a time. And then we were just using an old 22, 22 long rifle, not using hollow points. Had to wait for the right opportunity. This video was actually clipped because it was taking, I don't know, about five minutes for me to find a good shot on him. So I shot the pig with the 22. You can see he dropped instantly. He was knocked out, he wasn't feeling anything. So yeah, it's safe to say it was as humane of a death as it could be. Uh, like I said, one shot as you saw it. One shot he dropped, there was no squealing. That's how you know if you made a poor shot. If he's squealing and running around, uh, he did something wrong. So it was a clean, instant death for him. And we tried to make it as stress-free as possible. So after he finished bleeding out, we made sure there were no nerves left. We cut the holes in the back legs and that is just so we can hang the pig up. After that, we put the hooks in the back legs, hooked it onto the tractor and moved them over to where we were going to skin all the pigs. And as you can see, while we're skinning pigs, there's three of us. There really isn't that much room for three people to skin at a time. But with three people, if someone needed to go run and do something, it did speed up the process a little bit. For the next three pigs after this one, we were, there was only two people skinning at a time. The other person was working on something else. And uh, that seemed to work the best. For cows and deer, we have a skinning machine that we can hook them up to. But because 
pig skin is so I don't know I guess it's kind of thin and not easy to skin uh, we couldn't use the skinning machine we just decided to do it all by hand it did take a while especially the first one but after that we sped up the process and got it done pretty quick so after the pig is skinned the next thing on the list is to remove all of his guts all the insides the heart liver lungs all that kind of stuff uh, we are going to take all of that out once again, I'm used to doing this with a deer, which is laying on the ground. We just field dress them out in the field and uh, then bring them to the cooler. But for pigs, this is the first time I've done one hanging up and um, it did take me a little while to get used to it. Uh, there's definitely people that could do it a lot quicker than I did. And of course, when you're gutting any kind of animal, the most important thing is to not poke a hole in any of the guts and get any kind of poop or pee on the meat. So gotta be extremely careful, especially when you're making the first initial cuts. Uh, just make sure you do not puncture any of the insides. And because we wanna respect the animal's life as much as we possibly can, that means we're gonna try to have the least amount of waste as possible. So the heart, we will actually try to eat that, and the liver and some of the other guts, those will actually turn to dog food. I know some people would eat the liver, but we are not big into eating liver. So even if we don't eat it, we do have pets and they will be the ones that clean up the mess that we do not eat. So everything from bones to the guts, we will have something that will end up cleaning it up. And if the pets don't want it, it will go into a compost pile. So after we have gutted the animal, the next thing we did, we wanted to split the carcass in half, just so it makes it easier to handle and get it into our cooler. So to do that, the only tools we used was a sawzaw or reciprocating saw, whatever you want to call it. And we actually found and ordered a bone blade to do this. We used it on cows before, but basically we just start there next to where the tail would have been and split clear down through the middle of the spine all the way to the bottom. And the last thing we do after we have split the carcass in half, there's gonna be some bone dust or chunks of bone stuck to the carcass now. And of course you also have some blood there as well. So we just took some water, washed it off. We didn't have access to a hose because it was frozen. So yeah, get some water, wash some of that stuff off. And then it is off to the cooler. So here are all of the pigs. Um, we've also got this little thermometer here, not to really need it, but just to make sure that cool bot reading is accurate. So this was the last pig we did. He was the biggest, I'm not sure on a weight yet on him. This, this one here, these two, uh, this was the smallest pig, which in here they all look roughly the same size. There's probably a 50 pound weight difference from this one to these here, but these two here this was the second largest and then this one here on the end this is the first one we did this is the one you saw skin this was actually the second to smallest so i know in here it's hard to see how big they are um, but i'd say each of these halves weigh oh i don't know probably 75 pounds roughly we'll try to get a better a better estimate on those later but anyway as you can see we did which this is the one thing we did wrong. Uh, we left the back legs still with hair on them. We're supposed to cut those off and we just didn't. So um, they're still on there for the most part. The carcasses are pretty clean. The only one that wasn't very clean was this one here. And uh, I'll try to find a spot. There you can see a little bit of dirt on the fat and all of this fat we will be trimming off the outside of it just so there's not any dirt there. But 
The rest of them came out really clean. So of course, I'm gonna have a video on processing all of these. You're hopefully gonna be doing that this weekend. And once again, we're not professional butchers, so everything you're seeing here, this is just a combination of things we've seen online and our knowledge of butchering other animals, so. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know YouTube would not allow me to monetize this, so I didn't even try. But with that being said, I will see you all next time.